This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Where is the car key? I don't understand. Which hole has the car key in it? Come on, I don't want to be late to this. You're killing me, man. The all-new Elantra with Hyundai Digital Key. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Here's a couple of names in the news today. President-elect Joe Biden is busy filling out his cabinet, and yesterday he announced he's nominating former South Bend mayor and Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg to head the Department of Transportation. Biden has pledged to spend billions of dollars updating the nation's infrastructure, including building more EV charging stations and other green projects. And the other name in the news is Jae Hoon Chang, who was named as the new co-CEO of Hyundai Motor. He had been the global head of the Genesis brand. The Volkswagen Group's massive investments in EVs and AVs led it to slash costs in other areas. But as of right now, that will not include selling off Bentley, Lamborghini, or Ducati. There's been plenty of speculation that they would go on the chopping block to raise capital, and it sure is possible that VW shopped the brands. But this week, the board agreed to keep them around. It also announced that Bentley would be merged into Audi. And in other VW news, it may have darn near killed off the diesel engine, but it's sticking with them. It recently upgraded its 2-liter diesel engine, which is used by many of the group's brands, to surpass Euro 6 emission standards. To reach that goal of no more than 80 grams of NOx per kilometer, VW slapped a second catalyst reduction system further down the exhaust. It's particularly effective under high engine loads. The hottest automotive stocks yesterday include the startup QuantumScape, which is working on solid-state EV batteries. It was up $6.10 a share, or 10.9%. And Lidol, a company which makes thermal and acoustical materials, was up $16.09, or 10.9%. You may have never heard of Lidol before, but it's been around since 1869. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. General Motors is getting really bullish on 3D printing, so it established what it calls the Additive Industrialization Center to put all of its 3D efforts into one organization. The AIC is evaluating different methods and materials that can be used in additive manufacturing. GM has been testing 3D parts on its Corvette race cars and will put some parts into production on the Cadillac CT4 and CT5V, including HVAC ducts, a wire harness bracket, and the shift knob for the manual gearbox. The biggest advantage of using 3D printing is that engineers can try out different design iterations quickly and cheaply since there is no tooling that needs to be made. For example, the brake ducts on the Corvette C8R went through four different design changes and the final design was 64% cheaper, took only one week to make instead of 10 weeks, and suffered zero failures. The Hummer EV battery pack was developed with some 3D parts that took 50% less time to make and were 58% cheaper. GM is also using 3D printing to make production tools at its assembly plants. While most of its efforts so far involve plastic parts, it's also developing new metal alloys to print even more kinds of parts as well. Geely's Chinese brand Lincoln Co. showed off its first EV back in September and less than three months later has already started pre-production prototype testing. The Zero EV, as it's now called, rides on the group's new sustainable experience architecture, which will also be used by Volvo and Polestar. The batteries mounted in the floor are said to return a 700-kilometer driving range,
but that's based on the NEDC test. It would likely have an EPA range of about 300 miles. As you can see, it still looks similar to the concept with short front and rear overhangs and an SUV-like rear end. Chevy is once again teasing the upcoming Bolt EUV. This time it's the electric vehicle's signature lighting, which features a sequential front turn signal and LED daytime running lights. As you can see, it's much sleeker than the current Bolt's headlights and has a bit of a hockey stick look. No word yet if the regular Bolt will adopt this look, but it wouldn't surprise us. The Bolt EUV goes into production in the summer of 2021. And here's some good news for EVs. Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicts that shrinking battery prices will make EVs as affordable as ICE vehicles in just three or four years. Battery prices have gone down nearly 90% in the last 10 years, and the average pack for a vehicle now sits at $126 per kilowatt hour. By 2023, that will reach $100 per kilowatt hour, which Bloomberg sees as the tipping point. And even if prices for raw materials go back up, it will only delay that timeline by a few years because solid state batteries are expected to start coming into the market. Those batteries are also expected to drag battery prices down, which could be as low as $58 per kilowatt hour by 2030. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. And by Hyundai. We've already reported on the new Toyota Mirai, but here's a few specs for the U.S. market that we didn't have before. The EPA estimated range comes in at 402 miles, which is a 30% improvement over the last car. It will carry a starting price of a little under 50 grand, more than $9,000 less than before. And everyone sold or leased will come with up to $15,000 in free hydrogen. Cars are becoming more and more sophisticated and are being equipped with more computers to help run all those systems. And this growth is helping boost the supplier Bosch's bottom line. Since last year, the company has won orders for vehicle computers worth more than $3 billion. To help meet demand, it created a new unit that starts operations next month, which will combine its hardware and software engineering for vehicle computers, sensors, and control units. And this business won't slow anytime soon. According to McKinsey, software share in the value of a vehicle will rise from 10% today to 30% in the future. Every automaker in the U.S. has seen its sales drop this year, with one exception, Volvo. Its sales are barely up compared to last year, but in November, they surged 36% on a daily selling rate basis, according to Ward's intelligence. And after the V60 wagon rolled through the Autoline garage, it's easy to see why the company has kept its head above the water during the pandemic. While the styling isn't flashy, it's tastefully done and features a nice premium look. The interior is minimalistic with very few buttons in the center stack. Most functions are controlled through the 9-inch touchscreen, steering wheel controls, or voice command. The V60 we drove is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, an 8-speed automatic, and all-wheel drive. That setup is good for an EPA-rated 25 MPG combined, and it provides very good get-up-and-go when you need it. The V60 carries a starting price of just over $45,000 and comes with plenty of options, and the one we test drove had a $57,290 price tag. It's a good option for someone who needs a little bit more room than a sedan, but is not interested in a crossover. Well, he teamed up with a guy named Daryl Hall, and he wrote smash hits like I Can't Go For That, and Sarah Smile, and a whole bunch of others. John Oates is one of the best known names in the music industry. He's also a hardcore car nut, and he's our guest on Autoline After Hours this Thursday. So join us for what promises to be a great show that mixes cars and music. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here again tomorrow.